Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an ambassador of Christ Jesus, through the will of God, to the saints, the ones who are in Ephesus, namely, believing ones in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be eulogized, the one who conferred benefactions upon us in the sphere of every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, even as he selected us out for himself in him before the foundations of the universe were laid, to be holy ones and without blemish before his searching, penetrating gaze. In love, having previously marked us out to be placed as adult sons through the intermediate agency of Jesus Christ for himself, according to that which seemed good in his heart's desire, resulting in praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed upon us in the Beloved, in whom we are having our redemption through his blood, the putting away of our trespasses according to the wealth of his grace, which he caused to superabound to us in the sphere of every wisdom and understanding, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to that which seemed good to him, which good thing he purposed in himself with respect to an administration of the completion of the epochs of time, to bring back again to their original state all things in the Christ, the things in the heavens and the things on the earth, in him, in whom also we were made an inheritance, having been previously marked out according to the purpose of the one who operates all things according to the counsel of his will, with a view to our being to the praise of his glory, who had previously placed our hope in the Christ, in whom also, as for you, having heard the word of the truth, the good news of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the spirit of the promise, the Holy Spirit, who is the token payment of our inheritance, guaranteeing the full payment of all, looking forward to the redemption of the possession which is being preserved with a view to the praise of his glory. On account of this, I also, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus which is among you, and of your love to all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you, as I constantly make mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, might give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the sphere of a full knowledge of him, the eyes of your heart being in an enlightened state with a view to your knowing what is the hope of his calling, what is the wealth of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the superabounding greatness of his inherent power to us who are believing ones, as measured by the operative energy of the manifested strength of his might, which might was operative in the Christ when he raised him from among the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, over and above every government and authority and power and lordship, and every name that is constantly being named, not only in this age, but also in the one about to come. And all things he put in subjection under his feet, and him he gave as head over all things to the church, which is of such a nature as to be his body the fullness of the one who constantly is filling all things with all things. And you, being dead with reference to your trespasses and sins, he made alive, in the sphere of which trespasses and sins, at one time you ordered your behavior as dominated by the spirit of the age in this world system, as dominated by the leader of the authority of the lower atmosphere, the source also of the spirit that is now operating in the sons of the disobedience, among whom also we all ordered our behavior, in the sphere of the cravings of our evil nature, continually practicing the desires of our evil nature and of our thoughts, and were continually children of wrath by nature, as also the rest. But God, being wealthy in the sphere of mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, and we, being dead with respect to our trespasses, made us alive together with the Christ. By grace you have been saved completely in past time, with the present result that you are in a state of salvation which persists through present time, and raised us with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, in order that he might exhibit for his own glory in the ages that will pile themselves one upon another in continuous succession, the surpassing wealth of his grace in kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by the grace 
you have been saved in time past completely through faith with the result that your salvation persists through present time. And this salvation is not from you as a source of God. It is the gift, not from a source of works in order that no one might boast. For we are his handiwork created in Christ Jesus with a view to good works, which God prepared beforehand in order that within their sphere, we may order our behavior. On this account, be remembering that at one time, you, the Gentiles in the flesh, the ones habitually called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hand, that you were at that time without a Messiah, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise, not having hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you, who at one time were far off, have become near by the blood of the Christ. For he himself is our peace, the one who made the both one, having broken down the middle wall of the partition, the enmity, in his flesh, having rendered inoperative the law of the commandments in ordinances, in order that the two he might create in himself, resulting in one new man, making peace, in order that he might reconcile the both in one body to God through the cross, having put to death the enmity by it. And having come, he proclaimed glad tidings of peace to you who were far off and to you who were near. Because through him, we have our entree, the both of us, by one spirit into the presence of the Father. Now then, no longer are you aliens and foreign sojourners, but you are fellow citizens of the saints and householders of God. Having been built up upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, there being a chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ himself, in whom the whole building closely joined together grows into a holy inner sanctuary in the Lord, in whom also you are being built together into a permanent dwelling place of God by the Spirit. On this account, I, Paul, the prisoner of the Messiah, Jesus, on behalf of you, the Gentiles, assuming that you heard of the administration of the grace of God which was given to me for you, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery, even as I wrote above in brief, in accordance with which you are able, when you read, to understand my insight into the mystery of the Christ, which in other and different generations was not made known to the sons of men, as now it has been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and belong jointly to the same body and are fellow partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus, revealed through the good news of which I became one who ministers according to the gift of the grace of God, which grace was given to me according to the operative energy of his power. To me, the one who is less than the least of all saints, there was given this grace to the Gentiles to proclaim the good news of the incomprehensible wealth belonging to the Christ and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery, which has been kept covered up from the beginning of the ages in the God who created all things, in order that there might be made known now to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places through the intermediate agency of the church, the much variegated wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he carried into effect in the Christ, Jesus our Lord, in whom we are having our freedom of speech and entree in perfect confidence through faith in him. Wherefore, I am asking in my own interest that you do not lose heart by reason of my tribulations on your behalf, which are of such a nature as to be your glory. On this account, I bow my knees to the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he would grant you according to the wealth of his glory, with power to be strengthened through the Spirit in the inward man, that the Christ might finally settle down and feel completely at home in your hearts through your faith. In love, having been firmly rooted and grounded in order that you may be able to grasp with all the saints what is the breadth and width and height and depth, and to know experientially the love of the Christ, which surpasses experiential knowledge, in order that you may be filled up to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to the one who is able to do beyond all things, super abundantly beyond and over and above those things that we are asking for ourselves and considering, in the measure of the power which is operative in us, to him be the glory in the church 
and in Christ Jesus, to all the generations of the age of the ages. Amen. I beg of you, please, therefore, I, the prisoner in the Lord, order your behavior in a manner worthy of the divine summons with which you were called, with every lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, doing your best to safeguard the unanimity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as also you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one placing into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit, one God and Father of all, the one above all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, there was given the grace in the measure of the gift of the Christ. Wherefore, he says, having ascended on high, he led away captive those taken captive and gave gifts to men. Now the fact that he ascended, what is it except that also he descended into the nether parts of the earth? The one who descended himself is also the one who ascended above all the heavens in order that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some on the one hand as apostles, and on the other hand as prophets, and still again some as bringers of good news, and finally some as pastors who are also teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the ministering work, with a view to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith, and of the experiential, full and precise knowledge of the Son of God, to a spiritually mature man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ, in order that we no longer may be immature ones, tossed to and fro and carried around in circles by every wind of teaching, in the cunning adroitness of men, in craftiness which furthers the scheming deceitful art of error. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, who is the head, Christ, from whom all the body, constantly being joined closely together and constantly being knit together through every joint of supply, according to the operative energy put forth to the capacity of each part, makes for increased growth of the body, resulting in the building up of itself in the sphere of love. This, therefore, I am saying and solemnly declaring in the Lord, that no longer are you to be ordering your behavior as the Gentiles order their behavior in the futility of their mind, being those who have their understanding darkened, who have been alienated from the life of God through the ignorance which is in them, through the hardening of their hearts, who, being of such a nature as to have become callous, abandoned themselves to wantonness, resulting in a performing of every uncleanness in the sphere of greediness. But as for you, not in this manner did you learn the Christ, since indeed, as is the case, you heard and in him were taught, just as truth is in Jesus, that you have put off once for all, with reference to your former manner of life, the old self, who is being corrupted according to the passionate desires of deceit. Moreover, that you are being constantly renewed with reference to the spirit of your mind, and that you have put on, once for all, the new self, who after God was created in righteousness and holiness of truth. Wherefore, having put off the lie once for all, be speaking truth each with his neighbor, because we are members belonging to one another. Be constantly angry with a righteous indignation and stop sinning. Do not allow the sun to go down upon your irritated, exasperated, embittered anger. And stop giving an occasion for acting opportunity to the devil. The one who is stealing, let him no longer be stealing, but rather let him be laboring, working with his own hands that which is good, in order that he may be having that wherewith to be sharing with the one who is having need. Every word that is rotten and unfit for use, out of your mouth let it not be proceeding, but whatever is good, suitable for edification with respect to the need, in order that it may impart grace to the hearers. And stop grieving the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed with a view to the day of redemption. All manner of harshness and violent outbreaks of wrath and anger and brawling and slander speech, let it be put away from you, together with all manner of malice. And be becoming kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, even as and just as also God in Christ forgave you. Be becoming, therefore, imitators of God, as children beloved and be ordering your behavior within the sphere of love, 
even as Christ also loved you and gave himself up in our behalf and in our stead as an offering and a sacrifice to God for an aroma of a sweet smell. But fornication and uncleanness, every kind of it, or covetousness, let it not be even named among you, just as it is befitting of saints. And obscenity and foolish talking or ribaldry, which things have not been seemly or fitting, but rather giving of thanks, for this you know absolutely and experientially, that every whoremonger or unclean person or covetous person who is an idolater does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of the Christ and of God. Let no one keep on deceiving you by means of empty words, for because of these things there comes the wrath of God upon the sons of the disobedience. Stop, therefore, becoming joint participants with them, for you were at one time darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. As children of light, be habitually conducting yourselves, for the fruit of this light is in the sphere of every beneficence and righteousness and truth putting to the test, and then approving what is well-pleasing to the Lord. And stop having fellowship with the unfruitful works of this darkness, but rather be rebuking them, so as to bring out confession and conviction. For concerning the things done in secret by them, it is shameful to be speaking. But all the aforementioned things, when they are reproved by the light, are made visibly plain. For everything that is being made plain is light. Wherefore, he says... Be waking up, he who is sleeping, and arise from the dead, and there shall shine upon you the Christ. Be constantly taking heed, therefore, how accurately you are conducting yourselves, not as unwise ones, but as wise ones, buying up for yourselves the opportune time, because the days are pernicious. On this account, stop becoming those who are without reflection or intelligence, but be understanding what the will of the Lord is. And stop being intoxicated with wine, in which state of intoxication there is profligacy. But be constantly controlled by the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always concerning all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, putting yourselves in subjection to one another in the fear of Christ. The wives, be putting yourselves in subjection with implicit obedience to your own husbands as to the Lord, because a husband is head of the wife as the Christ is head of the church, he himself being the savior of the body. Nevertheless, as the church subjects itself in obedience to the Christ, in this manner also the wives should subject themselves in obedience to their husbands in all things. The husbands, be loving your wives with a love self-sacrificial in its nature in the manner in which Christ also loved the church and gave himself on behalf of it, in order that he might sanctify it, having cleansed it by the bath of water in the sphere of the word, in order that he might himself present to himself the church glorious, not having spot nor wrinkle nor any of such things, but in order that it might be holy and unblameable. In this manner ought also the husbands to love their wives as their own bodies, The one who loves his own wife loves himself, for no one ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Christ, the church, because members are we of his body. Because of this, a man shall leave behind his father and his mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great. However, I am speaking with regard to Christ and the church. Nevertheless, also, as for you, let each one in this manner be loving his own wife as himself, and the wife, let her be continually treating her husband with deference and reverential obedience. The children, be always obedient to your parents in the Lord, for this is a righteous thing. Be always honoring your father and your mother, which is a commandment of such a nature as to be the first commandment with a promise, in order that it may be well with you, and in order that you may live long upon the earth. And the fathers, stop provoking your children to anger, but be rearing them in the discipline and admonition of the Lord. The slaves, be constantly obedient to those who, according to the flesh, are your masters, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart as to the Christ, not in the way of eye service as men pleasers, but as Christ's bond slaves, doing the will of God from the soul, with good will, rendering a slave's service as to the Lord and not as to men, knowing that each one, whatever good he may do, this he will receive from the presence of the Lord, whether he is a slave or whether he is free. And the masters, be practicing the same things toward them, giving up your threatening, 
knowing that also their master and yours is in heaven, and there is not partiality with him. Finally, be constantly strengthened in the Lord and in the active efficacy of the might that is inherent in him. Clothe yourselves with the full armor of God to the end that you will be able to hold your ground against the stratagems of the devil, because our wrestling is not against blood and flesh, but against the principalities, against the authorities, against the world rulers of this darkness, against spirit forces of perniciousness in the heavenly places. On this account, take to yourself at once and once for all the complete armor of God in order that you may be able to resist in the day, the pernicious day, and having achieved all things to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your loins in the sphere of truth and having clothed yourself with the breastplate of righteousness and having sandaled your feet with a firm foundation of the good news of peace. In addition to all these, taking to yourselves the shield of faith by means of which you will be able to quench all the fiery arrows of the pernicious one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Through the instrumentality of every prayer and supplication for need, praying at every season by means of the Spirit, and maintaining a constant alertness in the same with every kind of unremitting care and supplication for all the saints, and on behalf of me, in order that there might be given me utterance in the opening of my mouth, in every fearless, confident freedom of speaking, to make known the mystery of the good news on behalf of which I am an ambassador in a chain, in order that in it I may speak with every fearless and confident freedom, as it is necessary in the nature of the case for me to speak. But in order that you might also come to know my circumstances, what I am doing, all things to you, Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful ministering servant in the Lord, will make known, whom I am sending to you for this purpose, in order that you might come to know our circumstances and in order that he might encourage your hearts. Peace to the brethren and love, with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace be with all those who are loving our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity.